Jim, what do you see deep in the recesses of your own mind as the future of our nation? And I ask that question in that way because I think that the future of the Negro and the future of the nation are linked. They're insoluble. Yeah. Now, what do you see? Uh, are you essentially optimistic or pessimistic? And I really don't want to put words in your mouth because what I really want to find out is what you really believe. Well, I'm both glad and sorry you asked me that question. But I'll do my best to answer it. I can't be a pessimist because I'm alive. To be a pessimist means that you have agreed that human life is an academic matter. So I'm forced to be an optimist. I'm forced to believe that we can survive whatever we must survive. But the Negro in this country The future of the Negro in this country is precisely as bright or as dark as the future of the country. It is entirely up to the American people and our representatives. It is entirely up to the American people whether or not they're going to face and deal with and embrace this stranger whom they maligned so long. What white people have to do is try to find out in their own hearts why it was necessary to have a nigger in the first place. Because I'm not a nigger. I'm a man. But if you think I'm a nigger, it means you need it. And the question you've got to ask yourself, the white population of this country has got to ask itself, north and south, because it's one country, and for a negro, there is no difference in the north and the south. There's just a, you know, a difference in the way they, in a way they castrate you. But, that's, but the fact of the castration is the American fact. If I'm not the nigger here, and the, you invented him, you, the white people, invented him, then you've got to find out why. Well... And the future of the country depends on that, whether or not it's able to ask that question. 